Cause I'm gonna see a victory And I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Come on, church Cause I'm gonna see a victory Come on I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs power in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down. And I'm not backing down for many giants. Because I know, because I know how this story ends. Yes, I know. Yes, I know how this story ends. Sing it with me, because I'm going to see a victory. Come on, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. A victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you Lord cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Glory to God. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve, because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. My God will never fail. And my God will never fail. Sing it with me, cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. This is uh, Jeffrey Zimmerman uh, here again, taking the platform for Pastor Sean, standing in for him today, as is always my great honor and privilege and delight to do that. Um, I've been with, as many of you know, been with Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy for many, many years, almost 30 years now. Um, awesome man and woman of God, great people. Uh, they are the same on the camera, off the camera, on the stage, off the stage, wherever they are. They're always the same people. Love God with all their hearts. Love uh, all of us and, of course, all of you, the wonderful people of God. And uh, I am so happy to be with all of you again, ministering the word. Uh, today we're going to be talking about suffering won't last forever. I know that's good news for me, and I'm sure it's good news for many of you as well. Suffering won't last forever. Amen? So uh, before we get started, let's say a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lift you up this morning, O oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to minister once again before your people, Lord. God, I thank you for every person that is here in me today i thank you for their faithfulness lord and those who are tuning in for the first time lord i thank you for them god i pray that as i minister the word that you gave me today god that you would minister to your people and let the word be so simple that even a child can understand what you're saying to us today god we curse every spirit that would try to hinder us today. We curse every work of the devil in the lives of your people, God. 
we curse everything that is coming against them knowing that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned glory to god hallelujah let's just give god a hand clap of praise this morning everybody hallelujah thank you jesus thank you god thank you for victory thank you lord for covering us with your precious blood thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross of calvary lord to rescue us from sin from sickness and from poverty in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless your people today. Somebody lift your hands to heaven and say, My suffering won't last forever. Say it again. Make it personal. Say, My suffering won't last forever. It's in the Word of God. And if it's in the Word of God, we can have it in Jesus name let's begin looking at first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 the Bible says be sober be vigilant be aware in other words because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour now of course we know that Satan is not the real lion the real lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is, of course, Jesus Christ. However, we know the devil goes about as or like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He can't devour everybody, but he's looking for openings. He's looking for access. He's looking for places that people give him access into their lives, whatever that is. And so we have to make sure we're not giving him any access. In Job chapter 1, verse 7, the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? In other words, where are you coming from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. That's what he does. He walks around. He prowls around like a lion. He's looking for people to devour. Amen? And it says, in verse 9, Peter continues, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So it's telling us to resist Satan. Amen? Remember, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you now that doesn't mean that we won't go through afflictions on this earth you know some people say well if you go through hardship or you go through afflictions then it means that you're not confronting the devil or you don't have faith or one thing or another but we're going to see uh, a little bit later that that is certainly not the case you know and everyone uh, goes through afflictions as we're about to see here in just a minute but resist him steadfast. That word steadfast means stiff. It means solid. It means stable. It means strong or sure. It means firm. In other words, stand strong against the devil. Remember, the Bible says, stand therefore. Having done all, you stand. Even if you can't do anything else, stand against him. Stand your ground, you know. Don't give him an inch, or he'll take a mile. Amen? Amen. Now, affliction means hardship or pain. But it's interesting because affliction also means an emotion or influence. See, affliction doesn't necessarily have to be a physical hardship or physical pain. You know, it can be a broken heart, you know, because in this life, People will break your heart. Amen. Things happen. Tragedies happen. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Amen. So just because you're living for God doesn't mean that you're not going to have hardships. You're not going to have pain. You're not going to have problems. Amen. And we're uh, to read it in the New Living Translation. Verse 9 says, stand firm against him, meaning the devil, 
and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Okay, so it's important to know that God wants us to know that we're not in this by ourselves. Amen. A lot of people think that when they go through a time of suffering, it's easy to think that you're going through it all by yourself, you know, especially if there's not anyone around to help you. But the truth is you're not going through it alone. You're not by yourself. You've got brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world that are going through similar afflictions to, to what you're going through. Amen. And it's very important for us to keep that in mind because, you know, we, we need to know that the Bible says no temptation has over has come to you, but what is common to man. So everybody's going through it. Amen. It's not just one person. Or, or two people or whatever, whatever, you know, it's not just you. There's, there's lots of people that are going through the same thing. And that's good news because that means that people can relate to us. You see, you know, we, we speak when, when we speak to people on from the broadcast here, we know that there are several who are going through things that we either have gone through or sometimes are even going through right now. Hardships, pains, you know, uh, broken hearts, tribulations. Amen. We all go through it. And so remember Mark chapter 10, verse 30, when uh, Jesus was telling Peter and the disciples uh, what they're going to have uh, because they forsook all and they followed Jesus. He said, you shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. So persecution is a part of following God. You see, it's not something that just happens because you've done something wrong. You know, some people look at people who are going through hard times. They say, oh, that fellow must have done something wrong because he's having financial trouble or he's having trouble in his marriage or trouble in his ministry or he's going through a, a sickness or something like that. Some people look at that person and say, well, they must have done something wrong, you know. But Jesus said that persecution is part of the package when you follow God. Amen. John 15, 20, Jesus said, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. None of us is greater than Jesus. Amen. He says, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So, you know, we, we shouldn't think that, oh, why is this happening to me? You know, it is tempting to think that sometimes, especially when you're going through something that's really hard, you know, but we have to remember that if they persecuted Jesus. Well, they're going to persecute us too. Because if, if he went through it, who are we? Amen. You know, we're certainly not better than him. And we're not greater than him. But here's where the good news comes in. Because Psalms 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So see here again, just because you're going through something hard, or, or, or difficult does not mean that you've done something wrong. Amen? And it says many are the afflictions of the righteous, the person who's doing what's right, the person who's living for God, the person who's making sure that they're doing what God tells them to do and wants them to do. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but here's the good news. The Lord delivereth him out of them all, not some, but all that's good news because we know that whatever we're going through that we're not going to go through it forever i mean suffering won't last forever amen see psalms 30 verse 5 says his anger god's anger endureth but a moment in his favor is life weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning amen so suffering is temporary. Amen. First Peter chapter five, verse 10 says it like this. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, 
after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. See, suffering lasts for a while. Now, a while means of uncertain affinity. So in other words, we don't know exactly how long that while is. Some suffering lasts longer than others. But we do know that there is a limit on how long that suffering is going to last. Now, this gets me excited because even if I'm going through some hardship right now, even if I'm going through some suffering or affliction, I know that it's not a permanent situation and this is where people have to be so careful because sometimes people who are going through a difficult time will try to find a permanent solution to a temporary problem and maybe some of you have felt like that you felt like taking matters into your own hands some people maybe have even considered suicide because of how intense the the persecution is listen don't do it Don't do it. I believe someone listening to this broadcast today needs to hear this. Do not cause yourself any harm, as Paul said. Don't commit suicide. Don't try to give a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Because the Bible says suffering is for a while. And actually, the word a while also means puny in duration. Isn't that something? Brief. Now, anyone who's going through affliction doesn't think of it as being puny. Amen? You know, and some and suffering is very intense. So why does it say puny in duration? Well, Romans 8, 18, Paul kind of sheds some light on this. He says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. You see, what we have to remember when we go through hardship and suffering is we're going somewhere. Amen? And this hardship and suffering is a temporary situation. But we're going past it. We're going through it. I think it was Pastor Sean that said not long ago that when you go through something, that means you're coming out to the other side. That means you're going to get to a place where it's not there anymore. You're going to break through if you just hang on. Jesus said, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. And then after you have suffered a while, God will make you perfect. That word made perfect means to mend. He's going to fix you. He's going to put you back together. You know, it says he's going to restore you. He's going to he's going to perfectly join you back together. You know, when we go through suffering and affliction, sometimes we get broken. Amen. And things sometimes get broken in so many pieces. We don't see how God could ever put it back together. But that's where faith comes in. That's where trust comes in. You got to give have faith that God will take After you have suffered a while, he's going to take you and put you back together again. Amen? Amen. Establish means to turn resolutely in a certain direction. Remember, we're going somewhere. If you are going through affliction, you ought to rejoice right now. Because that means that you've got the devil's attention. If the devil is fighting you, that means you're going somewhere. That means God's got his hand on your life. That means the devil hasn't won. Amen? Amen. To confirm, to establish, to strengthen. The word strengthen means to confirm in spiritual knowledge and power. God is strengthening you. He's strengthening your faith. He's strengthening your knowledge of his word. He's strengthening your dependence upon him, you see. Many times in the Bible, we see guys like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that went through the fiery furnace, but they were promoted afterwards. Daniel went through the lion's den, but he was promoted afterwards. Jesus went to the cross, but how many of you know that God highly exalted him and set him on the right hand of his throne in heaven? Amen? 
So, and then settle means to lay the foundation. In other words, God is getting ready to plant us. He's getting ready to plant you. He's getting ready to, to establish you. See, a foundation, a building has to have a foundation so that it doesn't fall over in the time of a storm. Amen? Remember what Jesus said. If you hear the word of God and do it, then you are like a house that is built upon a rock. And that foundation of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the rock, it will never fail. It will never break. It will never crumble. As long as your foundation is Jesus, because the Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That temple needs a foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen? So if you are in Christ today, I want to encourage you. Suffering won't last forever. There is coming an end to the suffering. There is coming an end to the season of hardship and affliction. There is coming an end. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Father God, I cover your precious people in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that people's faith has been strengthened by the message today. That they can know that there is a purpose behind this affliction, this hardship, this trial that we're going through, Lord. You have a purpose, and if we'll just endure and stay obedient and let you put us through the process, Lord, you will put us back together, you will establish us, and you will build us back stronger and mightier than before. Hallelujah. And my friend, if you are not saved, if you've not given your heart to Jesus, then you can give your heart to him right now and he can begin today to put your life back together the way he wants to put it together. Without any further hesitation, just repeat after me. Say, Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And he is coming again one day very soon. Lord Jesus, please save me today. Come into my heart, Lord. Change me from the inside. Make me one of yours today. I turn my back, Lord, on the world, the flesh, and the devil. And I will follow you and make you my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 If you have said that prayer today and meant it with all your heart, we welcome you into the family of God. This is a decision you will never regret. And it may get tough sometimes, but always remember, suffering won't last forever. God bless. Amen. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash up account. The ministry cash up address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. 
You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Main Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.